Welcome to functional testing in SOAP UI. Now before we can get started, let's take a look at web services and what are they. To give you the most simple example I can think of, Facebook. Now, not just Facebook as a site, let's take a look at the technicality of it, the functionality of it. Before you can access a Facebook account, you need to sign up a, either a Gmail or a Ymail or an email account to retrieve a password as well. Now, Facebook and, for instance, Ymail are two completely different applications who need to work together to retrieve an account for you. Now, we've done this before and we've seen it happen, but do you really know what happens behind the scenes? That's called web servicing. You can't really see it, but it acts behind what you are actually doing. So, basically, you request something and you receive back, and it uses protocol. For instance, you've all heard the term hypertext transfer protocol. Now, through hypertext transfer protocol, a request is sent and a reply is given back to you. So that is basically web services in a nutshell. Now, SOAP UI, it's free. Yes, it's completely free and it's available on SOAPUI.org. If you access the website, you'll be able to download a free version. You can also download a trial version of SOAP UI Pro, which is highly recommended for any users of web testing. Now, some of you may wonder what the PC requirements is for such a software. If we take a look on the list, you'll see for Windows, we need 1 GHz or higher, 32-bit or 64-bit processor, 512 megabytes of RAM, 200 megabytes of hard disk space for installation. This would include SOAP UI and Hermes JMS and Windows XP or later, which is actually quite common around PCs regarding Windows. Not too hard to retrieve or find. Linux, 1 GHz or higher, same 32-bit or 64-bit Intel or AMD 64 processor. Also the 512 MB or RAM, 240 MB of hard disk space for installation for SOAP UI Pro and Hermes. Ubuntu, Red Hat, Fedora, Cent operating system, SUSE or other distribution. And of course Java 6. And then for Mac, we have a computer with 1 GHz or higher, same 32-bit or 64-bit Intel or PowerPC processor, 512 megabit RAM, 140 megabyte of hard disk space for installation, so PUI and Hermes, and of course the Mac operating system 10.4 or later, or Mac operating system X server 10.4 or later, and of course Java 6. So those would be your main installation options and PC requirements. Now to get started, let's access our SOAP UI interface. For the purpose of the demonstration, I'll be using SOAP UI Pro, and I'll be sure to point out any specifications regard. So I'm going to kick off this demo by creating a new SOAP UI project, which I'll be accessing by File menu, New SOAP UI project. Now for the purpose of the demonstration, I'll be using this link, which is a WS, a WSDL link, WSDL link. Copy that, and paste it in within the requested WSDL link box. <clears throat> as you can see, an automatic name has been given. Now, um, I, you can either leave it whether as I am, or I can replace it with any other name, of course. But for now, I'm just going to leave it as weather. In the same breath, I'm going to choose create a sample request and also create a test suite for the imported WSDL and click OK. And as you can see, it's been processing. And we can also name the suite. So the suite's name, I'll name sample. Just for now, let's name it sample suite. There we go. So suite's been created. So for the time being, I'm running a service that can get me the weather forecast for a certain zip area. Say for instance, if I want Beverly Hills or New York City's weather, I can type in the zip code and it obviously pops out the request retrieved to the user, which is known as a service, of course. So if you can take a look, um, the project currently, Weather Soap, contains three main commands, which is the Get City Forecast by Zip, Get City Weather by Zip, and Get Weather Information by Zip, and each of them has their own request. So for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to double click on the first request, which is the Get City by Forecast by Zip. So if I just activate that, now, this is specific to SOAP UI Pro, which you can't get in the free version of SOAP UI. It's the form view, which is actually quite natural view 
the one that you will get in the normal um, free SOPIO version would be the XML view. But for now, I'm going to demonstrate using the form view. Now, say for instance, we would like to retrieve the weather forecast for, say, Beverly Hills. We would type in the zip code 90210, as many of you TV goers will know the code. And if I click on the run button at the top, which looks like a green play button, I'll receive my generated XML and of course form on this side, which states the success of the service is true, the response is city has been found, the state is California, the city of course Beverly Hills and the forecast has been listed. We can also take a look at the outline view, the raw view and of course the XML view which can be visible in the free version of SOAP UI. So basically what I just did is I placed in a request I received a response and that's what I want to happen when this is active on the web. So basically I just tested my service. Was it working? Did it come out right the way I wanted to? Is my zip code re retrieving the actual city I need? And of course the answer is yes to this. Let's just quickly take a look at the different views. The XML view of course allows you to go edit some of your code. If you want to change for instance your state's name or your city's name regarding the request you can do this in the XML view. And then if we, of course, take a look at the outline view, which allows us to expand and collapse different nodes within the response. Now, this, of course, is also only available within SOAP UI Pro version. Next, we'll be adding a test case to our current request. So next, I'll be right-clicking on my request, the first one we played with, and add to test case. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and basically create a new test suite. It prompts me for a new name, so we can add in any name. Of course, I'm going to leave it as default. And name for a test case, basically leave it the default, click OK. Leave all your default settings, continue with OK. And of course, our test case has been created. Now, as you can see here, I have a test suite. And if I just collapse that, Basically, you'll see I have a test case within it and including its test steps, which the first request was converted into this test step right here. Now, to give you a better understanding, the test step, of course, if I click on the test step again, is, of course, the request we played with, with previously, retrieving, put it, placing in a request, and then, of course, retrieving it from the other side, which pops out what you required. So what if I want to assert that, for instance, the response is actually the list of cities and codes that I can access? Well, as the word states, I go ahead and click the Assertions tab. Right, and as you can see, it's activated. And now I'm going to right-click and say Add Assertion. Now the assertion I need to add would be from property content and I need to add an X path match. So you choose an X path match and you click add. Now the X path match allows you to identify different nodes within your response. So it makes it a lot easier to take a look at what you're working. Now here you have the dialog where you can enter the X path expression. But if you're lazy like I am, you can just click this button. And of course, look for your response that you want to work with. Now, for now, I'm going to work with the Get City Forecast. And as you can see, the assertion expression appears within the dialogs at the bottom. Once you click OK, you'll see the XML code, of course, appears within the expected result. And of course, the lazy way I just demonstrated is only available for SOAP UI Pro. Now, for those who want to follow suite or retrieve any of the links I use for the testing, you can visit the SOAP UI project website where you can find many of the links similar to these over here. Now, I'm currently using the weather link, which you can work with if you want to follow me in the exact same way. Now, of course, let's get back to our expression and see how far we can take this. So once we're done, I'm going to click a quick save. And then, of course, the assertion has been added within the dialog box. And of course, the green icons and the valid text indicate that the assertion passed the test. Now, let's demonstrate how things can go wrong. Now, I'm using a weather forecast for the United States, 
Now, being from South Africa, I'm going to use a South African code to see if it can work. So I'm going to use the code 6700, which is unique to a South African country and a city. If I play the code, we'll see that the match failed because, of course, South African cities have nothing to do with the United States. So let's get that fixed again. Let's go back to 90210, which we know is unique to the United States. Run the insertion and, of course, take a look. It is valid and it matches. No red squares, no red circles. Only green. And green, of course, means it's positive. Now we can also add assertions from the outline node. So take a look here. Let's take, for instance, the body. Add assertion for existence which means I'm going to test, for instance, that the or I'm proving that the assert um, response contains a body node. So SOPUI inserts the exist statement of the body and of course the result is seen as true. Now of course to add the insertion, if we remember correctly, we just click on save. And of course the insertion has been added. Of course I can also execute my tests. I can execute them on a test case level, on a test suite level, and a project level. Right, but I'll be executing on a test suite level, so I can open my test suite and of course click the play, and of course it runs the test case. And it is a completely finished and tested case in this demonstration. But remember, this refers to only one test case, which was one test step, which was get city forecast by zip. So yes, this one works. And of course, to get a clearer view of that, we can take a look at the test suite log, which refers to the test case and the step, the test step. And of course, this will indicate to you if a certain step within the test case passed or did not pass. And of course, you've seen what it looks like if it does not pass the test. Now, I can also choose to generate a report of the test step and I can click on this icon just to quickly demonstrate that again. As you can see, this icon here creates a report for this item. I'm going to leave all my default settings and click OK. And let's see the generation. Generates a nice PDF report for a visual look into the test. And within the report, you'll see it lists your project, your test suite, and its names, the test cases, the number of test cases visible, the number of assertions, and that would prove your report of your test. Right, so that would be the basic functional testing of SOAP UI. Um, if you want to do this demonstration by yourself or follow this tutorial, you can download SOAP UI Pro once again uh, for a trial version of 14 days via the SOAPUI.org website, or you can simulate it with SOAP free version, but of course some of these features are not avail available within the free SOAP version. Well, enjoy!